Alrighty, it is time to finally talk about it. The leaked layout for the Knott's Berry Farm Giga. On December 28, 2021, the entire coaster community was taken by complete surprise and shock when a massive new coaster layout from Knott's Berry Farm was leaked to the public. The Drunk Riders podcast posted on Twitter a site plan for the Knott's Berry Farm expansion project. This includes a reconfigured parking lot, a new covered parking garage, and of course, a massive, and I mean massive, roller coaster that absolutely dwarfs the rest of the rides at the park. And based on key design elements, support profile, and layout, we know for certain that this plan is indeed for a massive, record-breaking B&M Giga Coaster. So at this point, you are probably wondering, this isn't Brendan? Well, you'd be right. My name is Dustin, and I am a proud part of the Amusement Insiders team based in sunny Central Florida, and I'm back on the channel to analyze this massive coaster. So sit back, hold on tight, and let's go for a ride on the Knott's Berry Farm Giga. This coaster is massive, but how massive is this coaster, you ask? Well, let's deep dive and find out. A team of coaster enthusiasts and I took those plans and brought them into No Limits 2, a fantastic coaster design software. There, we built the entire coaster just to see what this Bulger and Maviard Giga Coaster would look like. How do we do this? Well, those plans happen to have height markers set to feet above sea level. To estimate the actual ride height, I took some known information from our previous project where we worked on Orion. Orion station platform is about 5 meters above ground level. In these plans, the station was set at 88 feet above sea level. So based on that, I'll estimate the ground height at 71 feet above sea level. Like the rest of the entire layout prediction, take this height with a grain of salt because the plans did not include the actual ground height. We will estimate the height of the coaster to be 332 feet, the drop is 347 feet, and that takes the coaster to a top speed of at least 99 miles per hour. Based on the No Limits 2 mock-up, this coaster is 6,757 feet long and supports a fantastic 65 seconds of total ride time. The ride also includes a total of 13 elements, each of which adds to the sensation that only a B&M Giga can give. So let's talk about the elements. The coaster starts off with an estimated 332 foot lift hill that is sure to give you a beautiful south facing view of the Southern California Vista. That is sure to take anyone's breath away. But before you even have time to take all that in, the coaster drops 347 feet into an underground tunnel. If you've been on Leviathan, Orion, or Fury 325, you know this drop will seemingly last forever and is sure to give fantastic floater airtime with some sweet flowjector airtime in the back. Following the dive through the tunnel, the coaster will execute its first turnaround, a 196 foot tall banked turn which is sure to give you some great positive G's and maybe even a hint of laterals from the back row right seat as you climb up the turnaround. This element is very similar to the first turnaround on Leviathan and Theory 325. Next, we have what is sure to be a fan favorite, a 73 foot tall twisting speed hill that is quite similar to the speed hill on Leviathan. If this airtime hill is anything like Leviathan's, the exhilaration of this prolonged airtime moment is sure to pack a punch. Next is a classic B&M parabolic airtime hill. At 185 feet, 
This is the tallest airtime moment after the first drop. The airtime hill is guaranteed to deliver some excellent prolonged floater airtime. The best comparison to this hill would be the massive and iconic floater hill on the Viathan. After that, we have a 72 foot tall bank turn similar to those found on Fury and the Viathan. But the truly iconic moment for this ride will be the 146 foot tall ampersand helix turnaround. This will be the only element of its kind in North America. The only other operating coaster in the world that has anything similar would be Shambhala at Port Aventura Park in Spain. This element is called an ampersand because the element will look like a giant ampersand or and sign as it's known from the parking lot and surrounding area. This is another element that is sure to deliver a punch this time in the positive G category, producing close to 5 Gs for a very brief amount of time before ascending the helix. After this iconic element, the coaster yet again delivers another powerful moment via a nice 69 foot tall speed hill which packs an estimated negative 0.7 Gs according to the No Limit simulation. Following that, there is a 111 foot tall parabolic airtime hill, which delivers yet again another moment of sustained floater airtime. Next, we have the X Factor element for this ride, an 84 foot tall outward banked floater airtime hill. Every recent BM Hyper model has introduced some new and seemingly innovative element. Fury 325 introduced the, the treble clef. Leviathan introduced the BM Twisted Speed Hill. Orion introduced the floater wave turn. Shambhala introduced the amber sand. And Candemonium introduced the outward wave helix. Based on top down track profiling and general BM shaping, I can predict this element will be one of a kind. Following that, we have a 78 foot tall bank turn with a slight pop of airtime. This will be very similar to the final turn on Orion. Next, we have a 59 foot airtime hill, a 56 foot bank turn, and finally, one last pop of airtime before the coaster screams into the 50 foot tall massive brake run in notorious BM fashion. Will this coaster be the best in the world? In my opinion, it will definitely be a top five coaster. Full disclosure, I have Leviathan, Fury 325, and Orion in my top 10, so I am fairly biased toward BM Gigas. But seriously, this coaster most definitely will be a crowd pleaser. And with a record breaking 6,757 feet of track, I expect this coaster to be the longest steel coaster in North America. With the ampersand and the possible outward banked airtime hill, this coaster is definitely going to bring a unique experience. On top of that, this coaster will likely be the first coaster with a chain lift to top 325 feet and could even be the first coaster with a chain lift to reach speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour. World records that are sure to make this ride an instant hit in the region. But there's two questions that remain. Are these plans real? And will this coaster actually get built? Well, first off, based on my years of experience with site plans and drawings just like this, I can verify that these plans are indeed real. These are very similar to some of the Orion plans that leaked a few years ago. Will this coaster actually get built? Officially, it is impossible to know until the park makes an announcement, but based on all the information we do have, I think this will happen. Some have raised concerns about sound being an issue, but as El Toro Ryan discussed in his video, sand can be put inside the track and supports to deaden or soften the noise created by vibrating track. With this innovation, I am confident 
that the park will be able to get the ride approved by the community. Ultimately, we won't know the true outcome of these plans and an opening date until more information comes out on the ride or the park makes an official announcement. As always, if any more information does come out on this ride, we will do our best to get you the latest. Until then, so long everyone.